lead it by four. That's a freeze. Yo, what's good, guys? We back at it. This is Chris Johnson. Got my partner, Jordan, in the building. Say what's up, Jordan. Hello, man. It's Jordan from Switch Cultures. Hoop overseas, too. Uh, we got a special guest with us. Yes, sir. Ready to introduce yourself. Norris Cole, two-time NBA champ. Two Out here in Monaco, two time. Make sure you say it right, two time. <laughs> I'm glad to be here with my brothers, man. I appreciate y'all having me. Man, thanks for joining us, bro. I really appreciate the time. Before we even start the footage, you know, it's a it's a man on that team that was Norris' teammate down in Miami. And you know, no, Norris, can you can you <laughs> tell the audience what it's like playing with that man? Yeah, that man by the name of LeBron James. Um, you no, know, he's a basketball genius, man, and he's blessed with some gifts, and he uh, he makes his teammates better. And you know, I was fortunate to be able to have that coming straight straight out of my rookie year to play with a guy like that and um, on a team like that. And he's, you know, he's a gifted basketball player, and it's no it's no wonder why the Lakers, you know, are having a special season. Wow, wow, okay. Let's do it, Jordan. That's all. That's all that needs to be said about, about <laughs> OBJ, baby. <laughs> Steps back, fakes Danny Green. Ooh, oh, <laughs> no, no, we gotta. You know, Trey Young is OD, bro. Wee. Whoa. <laughs> Here's Trey. Steps back, fakes Danny Green. Oh, I got a slow mo clip on the two. Yeah. Man, let's, get, let's get to it, North. Break down. <laughs> Norris. Give, 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 give me a so, 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 so listen, listen. First things first, when you a guard, you want to get your man off balance. And so what Trey Young does, he gives a hard dribble to the right and then boom, behind the back, Danny Green's off balance already. Look at his feet. Oh man, Danny Green, he's way, his hips and everything are going one way. The ball's going the other way. Trey Young is already on balance. He went hard, right, one dribble, bam, back behind the back. But he's still square. Feet square, still can move either way. He's perfectly balanced. Then he gives him the – his eyes look up at the rim. He gives him the quick shoulder flinch because he's a great shooter. And so Danny Green has to respect that. And after that, he's lost. Wow. Quick, subtle, boom. And then the flotation device as a guard. You got to have all three levels. You got to have the deep range, the mid range, and you got to be able to finish at the rim. And Trey Young, mid range, floater. So right here, I, and I love, I, I love Danny Green as a defender, bro. And he has, he has he, see, six, six, five, six, six, uses chess. He's a champion as well. So it's not a knock on Danny, but this shows the level of play that Trey Young is at. And if you notice in the clip, there was, 10 eyes on him. All Absolutely. five Lakers was watching him. And <laughs> look at it right now. You got AD looking at him. Look at JaVale. JaVale looking at him. And you got D Green on him right now. Playing through, man. His change of direction is crazy. The level of floater is amazing. You can see Anthony Davis, the rim protectors, and the back. Once he gets by, he got Anthony Davis, and you got JaVale. And right there is barbecue chicken. Hey, you gotta respect that. You gotta respect that, man. Good defense there. Ooh, bro. Mm. First off, look at the way LeBron runs the floor. This, this dude runs the floor like he's twenty years old, bro. In the agility, he stopped on a dime. Wow. You know. Now, the one thing, and Norris can identify the work ethic of LeBron, right? The way LeBron ran that floor reminds me of the morning time when me and LeBron used to finish our workouts. Every workout we would finish at the uh, start with Monday, a down and back. Tuesday, we would go two down and backs. And we would build it up through the week, and we would run it. You're talking about a guy playing 17. He's in year 17, lining up at the end of a workout. I'm like, let's go, bro. And he line up, and he go hard. Anybody that joined the workout, we run. So running the floor here, people think that he's naturally gifted. Yeah, he has a gift. 
He has a work at the desk second. That's, that's number one. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the one with the dime. Yeah, right the dime. Hey, that quick step, that quick stop and go. Guys, that guys like that ain't supposed to be able to stop and go like that. Nah, they would normally run. They would normally get a charge in that situation with Trey. All right, now let's get this clip. I know you've gone through a lot of situations with this, Chris. So you can put, so we can, we can run this situation in many ways, Norris. In this situation here, LeBron is in the high pick and roll situation with Dwight. Once he gets downhill and gets by his man, Dwight does a great job of screening, but the big fella's in trouble. It's the, it's the misdirection one foot spin move, which is one of my favorite moves to teach because it's so quick. You don't have to be a superb athlete to be able to outsmart and outquick people. So let's watch LeBron get down here. Completed by four. That's a freeze. Oh, yeah. mm. Three views of it, so you're gonna see it. Ooh, like a dance move. Yeah. Right, look at the high crossover. Oh, now he got him. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh. That was, that's called, that's called uh, elite. <laughs> elite skill set right there. That's tough. Oh. That big had no chance. No, sir. No, sir. Not he, a, all he could do was foul him. That's all he could do. And he, he was too off balance to foul him. He couldn't foul him because it was on one foot. See, when you play a spin move off of one foot, it's quick. So you'll actually leave the defender standing right where he is. If it was on two feet, the uh, Lynn could actually get back into play because it's a slower move. So when we mm -hmm. were with Braun and with anybody that we're developing in our paint package, the point of the one foot spin move out of that high crossover is to get him going one direction, which is hips and feet. And you can notice LeBron right now is attacking his outside hip. So when he dropped that foot, LeBron now is in a spin move at the rim. There's nobody can get there. Watch. That is over. That's sick. Uh, that's OD, bro. It's OD. All right, here's the next clip. 45-39. Talk about this guy. First of all, this is called court vision. He saw this play coming two or three dribbles before it happened. He saw Dwight was trailing. All he did was cross the court because he knew all eyes was going to be on him. Gave it a dribble and then, threw it, you know, dropped it off for, for Dwight to finish. Jabari Parker was lost. What about the cut? Right? What about the cut from the, the cut, the, the cross court cut, what that did was it took it took it made Jabari have to commit because if he doesn't commit, LeBron is at the rim. And if you saw A D is down there taking up Alex Alex in his uh his space for the paint. So he had to stay on A D. Jabari had to help on LeBron, and LeBron knew that. So LeBron took his time took him across the paint, and when Dwight was in position to where he could catch and finish, boom, threw it between his legs, and you get a highlight dunk. Damn, that's nice. That's nice, nasty. All right, so here's the thing that, that LeBron does time and time again. I don't understand why. Well, you can't really play up on LeBron because he's going to the cup. So you want to give him space, you know, to actually shoot the jumper, but he's actually shooting the three pretty well. He's shooting at about 36, 37% from three. Yeah. He's just like, he, it's like a setup to the jumper you see right now. LeBron against Tottenham with four. LeBron of three balls. First mistake. <laughs> first, the first mistake the defender made was let him get into his rhythm dribbles. That's it. Chris will tell you as a trainer, one of the main things that we work on is rhythm. Get into the rhythm shots, rhythm finishes. And so, when LeBron goes into his rhythm dribble, first thing you got to do is throw him off the rhythm dribble. You don't have to steal it, but you have to get close enough to where he's not just out there filling his rhythm. Because like you just saw. He's comfortable right here in this moment. Very comfortable. Let's go back 
let's go back to what you were saying, Norris, about you said that mentioned off off the air that we talked about LeBron being able to shoot this type of range for a while. Absolutely. Let's, let's talk about that. Well, you got to understand, as a basketball player, you have to know your gifts. Either you're fast, you're strong, you have good agility, good hand-eye coordination, good shooting touch. LeBron has, is gifted with just about all of those things. But his one of his main gifts is his elite athleticism and strength. And so as long as he's on balance, he can shoot any shot on the court. And so when you allow him to have rhythm dribbles – with his God-given ability to be strong enough to shoot from anywhere on the court, he's in rhythm, he's on balance. With with his God-given abilities, only special things can happen. And as you can see in this clip, he got to his rhythm. Distance is not a problem. Flick the wrist, hold the follow-through, and it's cash. Wow. Look at that. It was no stress on that shot. No stress at all. <laughs> bang, bang. Yes, sir. Back to Young right here in this next clip. Danny Green situation. I guess Danny Green was guarding him the majority of the night. So, <laughs> I can see it. Hey, Brent, I can even start the clip. I <laughs> it happen right off the rip because <laughs> Trey, let, we got to give Trey Young some credit for, for basketball IQ. Like, it's yes, one to just make moves. Trey Young ain't making moves here. What he's doing is he understands the type of defender that he has on him. Yes, sir. Look how Danny's spread out. Danny's open up. He's using size. He's using length. He's trying to be as physical as possible with Trey because he's a smaller guard. Trey's like, like a boxer. Trey, and Norris, you've been an NBA guard. You've been, you're you not going to let that defender get into your frame. Absolutely, especially not, especially not guys that you know like to use their length on you. Right. Because once they close the distance, you know you it's can't get outside their wingspan. Now they can funnel you. Right. And that's not what you want as a small guard. You don't never want to get funneled. So right here, even in the situation, he set up a reject. You know, Danny looked like he's gonna go into the screen, but as you play the clip, Jordan, play it. He saw they tried to ice, they tried to ice it. That's called an ice defense, and you try to down it. Oh no, look at what he does to KC to look off too. I didn't even notice it until after. Let's look. Change of pace. Ooh. Mm. Ooh, hey, Chris, what you call that? That drop dribble, he threw it right through. He gave him the eyes and then dropped it through there. But that's what I mean by IQ, uh, Jordan Norris. Right here, let's see, even when we started from the beginning, before Jordan get into it, what he used was a skip step. In his skip step, which you're a great shooter, Jordan, you've been in the position of the screen and then from the outside. Whenever you skip, it gives you time to make reads. So he wasn't in to like a speed, rhythm. he was into his rhythm. Because when he skips and raises you up, if he takes a step back, Trey Young is shooting at Is right true. in, same foot, same hand, jumper, bam. Now when I go to skip, he's seeing. You can see Danny Fenner Grid is squeezing in, using limb. So now I'm gonna reject that ice. And now he's where KCP is on the, on the nail area. You know, he's right there where he's, KCP really supposed to slide all the way over and make him have to commit to pit, pitch the ball because Trey Young deserves that attention. Absolutely. So you would rather for him to be able to, to be able to pitch the ball than to use his eyes, drop dribble, and then float him right down the paint. Play that, Jordan. I didn't even see the look off, bro. It was so fast, bro. I just slowed up there. Hey, he can he can score on all three at all three levels. All three levels, bro. God dang it, he's good. 
Not here. Anthony Davis shoots it over Jones and connects. With outstretched arms of the bigs of the Lakers. LeBron. All right, here we go. We just talked about this, the rhythm dribble. Oh, my Jones. goodness. I can see it coming from a mile away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's get back into that, bro. Because it's all he does it every game. Every single game. You this is this is how you know some some teams don't watch film. Anybody that knows LeBron knows anytime he gets an ISO situation in the end of a quarter, he wants to get to one of the wings. He really likes the left wing. But on yeah. this case, in this case, he has the right wing. He has the matchup he wants. First of all, got to kill the rhythm dribbles. You have to. And if you're going to send the double team, send it early before he gets to the rhythm dribbles. Because as you're going to see watching this clip, once he gets his rhythm dribble and gets his balance, he can shoot from forever. You know the, and, fun, you know the funniest part about that, Norris? We worked on his hesitation out of that. So he has to go to the next level to that. Because what we did is when we go to pick back up, he can drop the dribble and go by you. So, mm -hmm. he, yes. So Lynn is in a bad position because look at him. Look how full the space. The floor is spaced very well. Even though the young guy is at the nail, Reddish is at the nail, Rondo has his hands up, Braun is already in commitment. It's six seconds on the clock, so he's already glanced up. And it's like, yo, it's six seconds. I need this rhythm. Right. I need this rhythm. So it's a great, he's a, his offensive IQ is super high. Okay. And the help is too far away. The help can't get there quick enough. He know, he know that help can't get there fast enough. Wow. Well, let, let, me, let me give a, a fan perspective. Let's, let's talk from a fan's view. So a fan's view would be, well, Alex is playing good defense because, you know, he's, LeBron really is not the best three-point shooter, so we would rather him shoot a three instead of him driving to the paint. What's your counter with that? My counter with that is you have to know players in their level and who they are. Mm -hmm. Players rise to the – when you have special all-time great players, mm -hmm. they rise to the level in certain game situations. And so, yeah, maybe in the second quarter you can say uh, LeBron is not a great shooter – we'll live with the contestant shot. But in big moments, this is why he gets paid the big bucks. This is why, you know, he's a four-time NBA, NBA MVP, you know, three times finals MVP. Like, you have to know who you're dealing with and the caliber of player that you're dealing with. Yeah, the data, the, the, the analytics, the data, it goes out the window because there's <laughs> 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 a different DNA. And, and and that being said, he has a killer DNA. So he's trying to kill you. He ain't out there trying to be your friend. That's why most people from a from a fan's perspective, Jordan, don't understand how good all 10 of these players are on the floor. I'm about to say, <laughs> analytics go out the window when it comes to certain situations. That's why you can't judge a player strictly off of analytics. Oh. Yeah, that, that's, that's a whole, that's a whole, we got to, that's a whole different conversation. We got to, we got to put up for the next episode because people ask those questions. And one thing that fans don't understand is that coaches, not all coaches, but it's a large percentage of coaches in the NBA that coach strictly on analytical data and they never coach in the Florida game. And this is why their team struggling. We, as fans of the game, we sit back and like, oh man, they're like, they're not watching the game. They're not. Big shout out to my guy, Norris Cole, two-time champion, balling over there in Monaco right now for joining us today. Norris, what, what you gonna shout out to us, man? Man, I appreciate you guys having me. My guy, CJ, my guy, Jordan, doing special things in this game of basketball and in this game of life. And, you know, I just I appreciate you guys' support of me, and I appreciate you guys allowing me to, to use your platform to talk about this game that I love. I love this game of basketball. Shout out, your, shout out your YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, so I have my YouTube channel, Norris Cole. Go like and subscribe. There's good content, and there's more to come.
Absolutely. Jordan, what you got? Yeah, no, nah, thanks for having us. I mean, I mean, thanks for joining us, Norris Cole. I really appreciate the time, man, for real. We got to definitely do more of these for sure because it just it, it's good for the game. I think it gives a lot of players and trainers and even young players, most importantly, the knowledge of why people do certain moves. It's just not trickery. People work on this stuff and they see that, they, you know, they, they're going far two, three steps ahead to know what's going on. So I think it's important for kids to, to learn this stuff, man. So I really appreciate you, Norris and Chris, taking the time out, getting this stuff going. Hey, big shout out to everybody that joined us today. Make sure that you go and subscribe today to Chris Johnson Who Ring that bell, give us a thumbs up, drop your comments below. Stay tuned for our next episode. We out.